All right, so the first thing I'm going to do for the IK setup here is I'm going to, what I want to do is to try and do some type of cleanup here is I want to test because typically in auto rigs that I work on, I use a singular pad for parenting all my IK handles to it. And so what I want to do is just run a quick test just to see if that pad would essentially exist. So um, what I like to do here is just do an IK group test here using the objects exists command. And check for the IK handles pad, which is typically the name I use for it. Um, and you know, if it doesn't exist, um, so if the group test equals zero, then create it. If it equals, um, if the IK group test equals one, then I'll just reference it. So I'll just say IK handles pad equals the name of that pad. Or uh, I'll just use a different variable. IK handles pad. There we go. Um, and um, so if I want to create it, then I'm just going to copy and paste the code in here. So create the group, name it IK handles pad. That's the new group. If it's already created, use that name. Um, and I am just to make it easier, I'm going to just turn the visibility off on that IK handles pad. Um, just because usually you do turn that off. Um, and now we're going to make the IK handle. And for the interest of time, I'm just going to copy and paste everything in here. So uh, I just call it IK. This is creating the IK handle. I use the start join as the first one in the IK joints, obviously the last joint. Um, you could you could put negative one in here as well. It works just the same. Um, and just name it. It's an RP solver IK. That's it. Um, the next lines of code here, I just turn off snap enable on the IK handle just in case sometimes it's it's been turned on. And I parent. Um, now this kind of defeats the purpose of the IK group test here, but um, you I, you can either, I'm just going to parent, oh, okay, so here's what I do. I parent, unparent the IK icon from the initial, you know, preset group that I made when I, for the preset icons. I unparent it from there and, um, And I'll re and I'll constrain it later. So now that the IK handle is created, now we're going to set up the pull vector. I'll call it slash twist because one of the options isn't a pull vector. So I'm just going to copy and paste all the code I have for that in here and explain what I'm doing here. So. Um, I say if PV type, which is the variable for the radio button, if it equals one, meaning it's set to twist, then all I'm going to do is for the IK icon, create a variable called pull vector twist and connect it into the twist attribute of the IK handle. This is a way to get the arm to twist without actually needing a pull vector control, just in case I've used it a lot for, um, quadruped uh, rigs if I'm using a IK spring solver, you know, because um, there are some issues with pull vectors. So in that instance, I don't actually use pull vector controls and I'll just use the twist attribute instead. But if the pull vector site, uh, type is set to two, then I, the same process I did for the IK control, I also do for the pull vector control. Um, 
you know, I change the color on it, uh, unlock and hide the specific attributes, or unlock and show the, the specific attributes, um, parent it to the world, rename it, um, rename it to the specific name I need, and freeze transforms, and then I'm done, and then apply the pull vector constraint in there. And then this is just me locking and hiding um, the attributes to get it into its final position. So it'll only, um, or just to get it so that it only has translates in the channel box. So now with that done, the last thing I need to do is um, connecting the icon handle to the icon. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste the code here because this should be pretty straightforward at this point. Most of what I'm trying to do here is just showcase like my methods. I'm not actually going to go through line by line of what the, what the code's doing. You can kind of figure that out for yourself. I'm just trying to showcase what I do here. Um, and this is constraining the IK handle to the icon, um, parenting the IK handle to the IK handles pad and locking and hiding the scale attributes um, for the icon. And that's it for the IK control. So that's all done. So the IK is now set up. And now we're going to do the same thing for the FK setup. Um, but before I do that, there's one last thing I want to do. Um, so you can see here I passed all these arguments into the IK setup from the auto arm rig but I'm not I can't necessarily pass um, the objects back to this that I want to so in this case I do need to make some variables global for this auto arm rig function to recognize and the ones I'm going to use I'm just going to put at the very top here label global and I'm going to use the IK joints here because that I'm definitely going to need um, the IK control I'll definitely need that as well as the pull vector control and that should be it at this point the, these are the only three things I'm going to need um, in the main function after after this so now that I've got those three things there, they should work in the main function. So now we'll go set up the FK. So similar as I did before, I'm going to copy the arguments here, bring them into the FK function so it recognizes them as arguments, and we're going to start setting all of this up. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to do the same exact process I did for naming the joints for the IK is for the FK. So this is pretty much the exact same code I had in the IK function up here. The only difference is they're named FK instead. And that's pretty much all I'm going to need there. I'm just going to call this naming the joints. I like to just label everything just so if I need to come back to it, I kind of know what everything is doing here. So, and we're going to kind of go quick through this part because it's pretty much doing a lot of the similar things that I've done for the IK setup. So this is just creating the FK control based off the preset icon that I already had here and doing all the same similar things, coloring it, um, unlocking and showing the attributes, freezing transforms, deleting the constraints, and um, renaming it to, and giving it this variable. And the next part is we're going to pad the icon. And we're going to just copy and paste the code in there. So this is just creating a, an empty group with a very specific name for the icon for the control pad. I call it control pad. I don't like to use the icon pad um, just because 
if I want to select something by the name icon, I don't want it to select the pads as well, so that's why I call it control pad instead of icon pad. Um, this it moves it all into position, freeze transforms, and appearance. The um, this parents the uh, FK icon to the joints there, and parents the icon to the pad. So that covers that first part. So now we're going to create the second control. So we need to create the second icon for the elbow. And again, we're just going to copy and paste all the code in there. Um, so this duplicates the FK icon. This renames it. Um, this re renames. Uh, this creates the uh, another empty group with a new name. Um, this moves the group pad into the place, into the correct place. Parents the icon. It zeroes out the translates and rotates, so it moves to the right spot. So it snaps there, and then parent constraints the joints to the icon. And that's that. And then the last thing I do here is I um, lock and hide the attributes that I want to work that I don't want to use here. Um, and since the FK control for the elbow, it only really needs the rotate Y. It doesn't need any of the other rotates because the elbows typically just bend on one axis here. Um, so it doesn't need any of the other rotates. So that's why I have a separate loop for that second control um, because it requires more, many more attributes there uh, to lock and hide. So now that everything's locked and hidden, that's pretty much it for um, the FK setup. That's pretty much done. So um, as far as I can tell, yep, the... The FK is parented on uh, the pad for the second control is parented under the first control. And that's pretty much it. So the FK is now done as well. So now that we have the IK and the FK both completed, now we just need to complete the IK FK setup, which again, we go back to the auto arm rig function. Because now at this point, whether no matter the rig type, it should already be completed. So now we can just go through and finish the switch process. Now, if so, if we're doing arm type one or two, meaning if it's just IK or just FK, at this point you're done. The script should the script should be finished. Um, but we need to set up the switch for the um, if the arm type is set to three for the IKFK, so make sure that we are tabbed over here under this third if statement, and we're going to start um, creating the joints here. Um, so I'm just going to com start copying and pasting some of the code I have in here. So the first thing I do, and this is just more for personal preference, I give it, I gave it custom, I gave it new variables, um, just because I think this variable was from older scripts where I had this already, where I had the switch already done using these variables, so I can just quick just re-identify the IK and FK joints under these variables because I've already had them working in here, so. Um, and the constraints to do the IKFK switch are done right here, given the custom variables. So the next grouping of code is to get the hand icon that should be created into place. And that's all this is doing, is just moving the hand icon into the right, or uh, just cleaning it up, renaming it, uh, giving it a new variable, 
and adding the attribute for the IKFK switch and at this point it should be pretty much good to go here um, so we'll just start by we'll then do the IKFK switch here I'm just checking so um, to try and conserve code, what I did is I did the, um, the set driven key for the IKFK switch under a while loop just to try and um, conserve uh, coding here. And so that's what all this is, this is here. So I get the length of the joints and I set the counter to zero and say while the counter is less than the length of selected minus one because um, there's no switch on the waist joint so I only need to con concern myself with the first two so I can um, decrease the selected length by one and then this is the code for the IKFK switch and it's just uh, running the keys for the parts of the constraint that are following the IK and the FK list and it uses the counter so it increments everything um, and that's pretty much it so now that the switch is done the last thing I want to do is add the visibility swap on the icons and all this is this is just another set driven key using the IK FK switch attribute and it turns on and off the IK controls and uh, and the FK controls as well. So it just hides them and shows them depending on the IK FK switch attribute here. Um, and that's pretty much all this is doing here. And so that the last thing I want to do at the very end here of this auto arm rig is I want to get out of the if statement here and all I'm doing is the last line of code and it's deleting the arm ref pad here, which is this uh, pad that the preset controls were under. I do that at the very end just to make sure everything's done and should be unparented from this group that I need. And then I can just delete this group. The last thing I wanna double check is just to make sure that the arm ref rig pad variable I did make it to global so just want to double check that so I did not make it global um, let me just check just to make sure that that pad is created and has that name okay yep yeah. so there's the arm ref pad and so all I'm going to do is at the top of this arm icon scale, I'm just going to write global arm ref pad. So now it, this pad's name will be global and it should be deleted. So it just checks if it exists. Um, and if it does exist, delete it. And that should be everything.